Big banks are invested heavily in the blockchain and crypto, and this is going to open the floodgates to institutional capital, resulting in big price moves across cryptocurrency, digital assets, and the token markets. We are in monumentous times for the future of crypto, as Bitcoin and blockchain technology will drive the fourth industrial revolution around the world and where you live. Let's discuss. Hey everybody, I'm Gary Palmer Jr., you're you, and together we are Minting Coins, your trusted source for crypto news, interviews, and ICO reviews. Thank you for showing up. Tap that like button. It really supports us and it helps other people find this content. Also, if you have any questions or comments, leave those in the comments box below so that your voice can be heard as part of the community. In today's episode, we're going to be going over some major headlines that have been happening in the space today and over the past couple days. There has been a lot happening as we've been covering in the past few episodes. The big banks are getting involved, more and more institutional investors are getting involved, and a lot of people in the crypto space and the crypto industry are expecting to see a similar sort of pattern of uh, bullish behavior as we get through the consensus blockchain week in New York City and move into the summertime, into the fall time where a lot of development is happening, there's a lot of news happening, there's a lot of adoption happening, and uh, we are expecting to see a uh, very exciting price movement going into the end of 2018. And as we are, you know, most of us are pretty well aware at this point, we have the next halving, I, I think it's the, the third great Bitcoin halving that's going to be happening in just over two years, about two years and three months away. And the total supply of Bitcoin that gets created every 10 minutes is going to get cut in half. Uh, we think that's going to potentially have a huge effect on the marketplace. And we think that Everyone is racing in terms of the development and the, uh, you know, expansion and the awareness of their different cryptocurrency projects and capabilities to increase the adoption of uh, whatever, you know, other tokens out there, whatever other uh, blockchain projects are out there uh, before the cryptocurrency market really blows up and before the majority of people's attention around the world shift from traditional technologies that they're already involved in and they start shifting to looking at blockchain technology and incorporating this technology uh, a part of practically every level of business uh, relationships, consumer relationships, as we have more computers and robots that are coming online. Each of those is you know, potentially gonna have its own cell phone service. It's gonna be able to send and receive information. It's gonna be able to connect to the internet. And not only will it have its own you know, cellular connection, Wi-Fi connection, internet communications connection, but these devices are also gonna be able to exchange uh, value, and they're not going to be—they're not going to be able to do that with fiat. They're going to have to do that with some sort of crypto, some sort of cryptographic blockchain technology. It's going to prevent, you know, all the issues that come with fiat as a unit of accounting. Uh, this is just going to create massive growth, massive economic um, acceleration in terms of how this industry is going to affect the world. And the banks see this. The banks know this, and all of the banks from the the biggest and and uh, greatest um, you know institutions of this nation of the world are in the process of pivoting uh, and are accelerating that process because what they see is going to happen, what they think is going to happen, which what they say internally amongst themselves is very different from what they tell the public. But we can start to see what's happening. We can start to see the writing on the wall as this pivot is happening in real time, but the only people who are going to you know, know this and see this and pay attention are the people who are looking for this information. Everyone else, the vast majority, you know, 95% of the rest of the world, they're going to retroactively look at this as history where you, know, you, looking into this information now, you are a part of the current events of what's going on. So with that being said, let's uh, dive into today's news, take a look at the headlines and let's discuss.
So first off, talking about Bitcoin and where Bitcoin is going, there's not a lot of love for Bitcoin. Everyone is really focused on all these other awesome projects that are happening in the space, but Bitcoin cannot be ignored. Bitcoin is arguably the most decentralized blockchain technology, the most decentralized uh, cryptocurrency out there. And with the expansion of uh, Bitcoin is the Lightning Network, which is promising to uh, reduce the fees, um, increase the number of transactions per second, increase the amount of privacy, and increase the ability for uh, liquid transactions to happen between merchants and consumers across the world. We have some examples of uh, Lightning Network being used uh, live as a payment option at this one kitchen and bar, and uh, it's really interesting. You can watch the video, take a peek at this tweet in the show links below and uh, you can watch this and you can see that we are on the the very beginning stages of the incorporation of lightning network this is going to encompass bitcoin this is going to encompass uh, litecoin and there's going to be a lot of other blockchain technologies that adopt this lightning network uh, because they are also recognizing that this has huge potential to increase the scalability and usability of cryptocurrencies across the world between businesses and merchants. Additionally, uh, there's this really interesting article. There's this gentleman out there who's seeking to take the Lightning Network and connect it with NFC technology, sort of like how uh, is, is pretty abundant in Europe, um, but they want to make this um, a, a ability to use Lightning Network with near field communication technology. So there's a base set of standards across the world. So if you're a, a developer, if you're getting involved in Lightning Network, then I suggest that you take uh, a peek at this so you can see what this developer is talking about, uh, Igor Koda, who wants the payments to be uh, instant. And just like with contactless cards that they have in Europe. Uh, so a user would simply tap on the payment terminal and then presto, the uh, Bitcoin or Litecoin would be instantly transferred. Uh, and this is great because it could replace QR codes, which um, have sort of been the bane of a lot of you know businesses and users' existence since the creation of QR codes. Just not everybody likes QR codes and NFC technology with Lightning Network seems like a really interesting idea for us. And so across the world, across businesses and governments, we have more and more adoption of blockchain technology. We have BNW who's test driving the blockchain to track car mileage uh, for users' cars. And in exchange for users giving up this data on the blockchain, um, they're going to receive these token credits. And these token credits from the, this BMW program can then be used by the uh, car owner to you know, perhaps get the car service, to get new tires for the car, to do this or to do that. And so it's going to be this really interesting situation where blockchain technology is considering all the different parties involved, uh, not just the needs of one of those parties. Uh, and then people um, seemingly will be able to opt into this program or not. Uh, but the point is, is that we have corporations testing blockchain technology. We know we have um, in this next article, we see that the Polish Consumer Credit Agency is now using blockchain technology. Um, the largest credit bureau in Eastern Europe is implementing the blockchain technology to store and secure the customer information. And so not only are we seeing the adoption of the blockchain technology for corporations, but we're also seeing this uh, in the in-between organizations, in between the consumers and the corporations, between the corporations and the governments, between the consumers and the governments. Uh, and then this is just a stepping stone between the businesses, the regulators, the banks, and then eventually the governments, which are going to be implementing their own versions of blockchain technology, we're sure. Uh, we you know, definitely expect to see a crypto fiat, you know, the Fed note or the Fed coin. Um, it, it's, it'll be really interesting to see um, the process that this transition happens, but it really is, in our opinion, inevitable that we get a Fed coin or a Fed note simply because, uh, you know, if fiat is going to stick around, which, you know, let's, let's face it, it, it is, dollars uh, aren't going to be going away anytime soon, but that isn't to say that dollars you know, don't need to compete with Bitcoin. Dollars are very slow, dollars are very inefficient, dollars are very costly, and the government could make dollars faster and cheaper and more efficient if they were to cryptotize those uh, USD, that USD, those US dollars into you know, US 
cryptocurrency. It wouldn't be as cool as Bitcoin. It wouldn't be as decentralized as Bitcoin, but they would definitely be able to create, you know, essentially their own ICO, uh, not an initial coin offering, but an initial country offering, right? Um, very interesting times indeed. Buckle up those seatbelts. Back to the banking part of the world, the real part of the world that really controls everything from the top down. We have HSBC jumping into the game saying that, that they made the world's first trade finance transaction using blockchain technology. So HSBC issued a letter of credit for the U.S. food and agricultural firm Cargrill using blockchain. And so it used this platform developed by blockchain startup R3 Coda. Uh, and, and the exchange was performed in 24 hours, according to HSBC and ING. And so this performance of the world's first commercially viable trade finance transaction using blockchain technology is now a new tool that these banks are able to use, uh, banks like HSBC and ING, that is going to um, allow these records to be recorded, uh, as we were talking about a second ago, very quickly, very efficiently, very affordably um, using decentralized ledgers, right? This isn't really blockchain technology. This is more distributed ledger technology, which um, is less decentralized and therefore, in our opinion, would be less secure. But be that as it may, uh, the adoption of the blockchain technology is increasing. and even though they are trying very hard to separate the difference between blockchain technology, different implementations of blockchain technology, and Bitcoin, they're, they're related um, at, at a fundamental level. As we talked about in some of the past videos recently, we have the NASDAQ, which is uh, powering the crypto exchange, DX, which is set to launch next month. We have the centralized exchange of NASDAQ, which is going to be offering this easy onboarding process, charging zero fees for these different tradings. So with this, uh, what this provides is a new crypto exchange in town, and this new crypto exchange you know, comes with a brand of NASDAQ. It comes with the power of NASDAQ and the advantage of this cooperation according to NASDAQ is threefold. They have the brand name, they have the technology, and they have the regulations. They uh, own a lot of um, IP in the space. They are invested into a lot of different companies in the blockchain space. They have a lot of patents in traditional technology, financial technology, and now patents around blockchain technology. And uh, they also have great relationships with the regulators um, and wanting to, you know, be in this system, create this system and own this new system moving forward, this new industrial revolution, this uh, new blockchain world. Um, they want to be the central exchange in there. But the NASDAQ isn't alone. It's not just about what NASDAQ is doing. It's also about uh, what the New York Stock Exchange is doing. The New York Stock Exchange is actually owned by the Intercontinental Exchange. The Intercontinental Exchange is an American company that owns exchanges for financial and commodities markets and operates in 23 regulated exchanges and marketplaces around the world. Uh, the most notable, of course, would be the New York Stock Exchange, uh, NYSE. And the New York Stock Exchange plans for physical delivery of Bitcoin, which is going to pave the way for major, major, major cryptocurrency adoption. So for those who aren't savvy, what does physical delivery of Bitcoin mean? Physical delivery means that these contracts are going to be settled with the delivery of Bitcoin itself, BTC, cold, hard Bitcoin BTC, which, uh, you know, means it's not going to be settled in fiat. It's not going to be settled, uh, settled in, uh, you know, some other asset. It's going to be settled in the actual asset of which people are talking about. Um, and so if the, if the physical delivery of Bitcoin means that these settlements contracts are going to be delivered in Bitcoin, this is an extremely important factor for the mainstream adoption of Bitcoin. And so um, the New York Stock Exchange parent company, the International Con uh, the Intercontinental Exchange, ICE, uh, this news comes from multiple, multiple reports citing sources uh, familiar with the situation. And if true, this could be a momentous consequence for the future of crypto. 
And so the physical delivery of Bitcoin means that ICE has a custodial solution. And this is a, a big, big hurdle. It's very, very difficult to have a custodial solution. Everyone is fighting uh, to sort of create this technology. Coinbase is trying to do it. A lot of the big banks are trying to do it. And here we see the New York Stock Exchange and the Intercontinental Agency uh, Exchange, excuse me, is uh, now on the forefront of being able to deliver this um, custodial solution so that the bearer of these instruments, uh, the New York Stock Exchange, they're gonna have this uh, third party system and it's a big, big deal according to this quote here uh, that they've come up with this uh, solution for the institutional holders. What's more is that with this custodial solution, it's not good enough just to have it, but if the SEC qualifies it to meet the SEC compliance requirements, then what this would do is that this would open the floodgates to institutional capital. We're talking billions and billions, if not trillions, access to trillions of dollars of capital resulting in some pretty big price moves in the cryptocurrency markets. Um, this custodial solution, I think uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't know, would also open the door for pensions and endowments. Um, and this is leading a lot of people to the conclusion that cryptocurrencies are now being looked at as becoming an emerging asset class. And uh, a lot of you know, organizations, institutional investors, pensions, endowments, um, you know, just funds of capital um, are looking, you know, uh, maybe family trusts of capital, all sorts, you know, business capital are seeking. And, you know, then we're talking about 401ks as well, um, all sorts of buckets of money that could put a percentage of, you know, that capital into cryptocurrency, into Bitcoin. And uh, this can just be a huge in injection into capital, uh, into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency markets. And it will just... Um, take a lot of people by surprise when this happens so if you're watching this video now before this happens if you're watching this video in may um, or june or the first half of uh, 2018 then um, don't be so shocked when some of these prices may 10x and don't be so shocked when everyone is complaining about the volatility when we see these huge price swings once you know the big boys um, to start splashing around in this little kiddie pool playground that's been, you know, cryptocurrency for the past nine and a half years. And to reinforce this point, uh, we just see uh, more uh, anecdotal evidence coming in. Big banks invested heavily in blockchain and crypto. We have a $364 billion investment firm, just one investment firm. That's $364 billion, over a third to a trillion dollars. Uh, and what they are recognizing is that U.S.-based investment firms uh, are recognizing that blockchain technology will drive the fourth industrial revolution. And this is echoing the stance of all of these other large institutional organizations. Um, it's echoing the stance of uh, politicians and businesses around the world. And uh, they are recognizing this. And, you know, this is just underscoring the fact that all of this money that can't just go to the exchanges and buy Bitcoin now is very anxious to, to jump in, to dive in. Um, these uh, Goldman Sachs of the world and JP Morgan's, uh, the NASDAQ, the New York Stock Exchange, all of these guys, they're being inundated by their clients, you know, demanding that they take their money and uh, that, uh, that people get their money into crypto. Um, and they just don't know how to you know, go to the exchanges themselves. They can't you know, have the regulations aren't there. The rules aren't there for them just to take that money out and purchase it into crypto. Why? We need to have uh, at that large scale, they need to have these custodial solutions. These custodial solutions need to be SEC approved. And uh, these major exchanges need to work with these major regulators and create the systems where we can pivot from Bitcoin being, you know, bad and Bitcoin being, you know, evil and uh, Bitcoin murdering people on their night. And then we can pivot to a place where, you know, Bitcoin is really interesting and Bitcoin is really a positive thing. But the banks aren't going to say that until they have, you know, their chunk of tokens, their chunk of the blockchain infrastructure. And then they allow all the other money to come in to purchase on top of that. It's just the way things have always been and it's the way that they're trying to keep them moving forward. The difference is that you have an opportunity to get in now if you wanted to start understanding this technology. And last up here, before we wrap up, we have Tom Lee who's uh, telling us that the Bitcoin price is going to increase 
after the consensus conference. And so uh, he says the Bitcoin is set up for a massive rally going into consensus week. week. And uh, hello, if you <laughs> have been paying attention to what the exchanges and the banks are doing, then and you can see how that news really supports this narrative that Tom Lee is talking about. Um, so the Bitcoin price has dipped, you know, it went up to almost 10,000, um, dropped to nine. It's probably around, you know, uh, above $8,000 today or this week. But there's a huge relationship between consensus and the Bitcoin price and the value of Bitcoin increasing by 69% during the meeting. Uh, to, and then two months after consensus, the Bitcoin price being up 138%. Uh, Lee's expecting this pattern to hold, believing that the results from uh, this year are going to be even more significant than the results in this pattern that we saw the year previously. Lee has also predicted that the Bitcoin price will reach twenty to $25,000 by the end of the year. Some people are saying that's too low. Uh, there's other people who are way, way more bullish, expecting to see a Bitcoin price of forty to $50,000 by the end of this year. Um, I think it's really difficult for you know anyone to be wrong because essentially there's a 50-50% 50, 50 chance of it going up and a 50-50 chance of it going down. Um, and ultimately, no one can predict the future. But we do understand how the supply works. We do understand how the demand works. And uh, and it'd be really interesting to see where these chips fall, because I don't think anyone expected that the Bitcoin price last year was going to reach uh, $10,000, let alone $20,000. And uh, it'd be really interesting if um, the actual price at the end of the year um, shoots up perhaps even higher than 50,000. I mean, anything is really possible. I'll throw this uh, chart in the show notes for you as well. It's just an additional link that uh, has the data year over year for 2015, 16, 17, and then 18, giving sort of the case on why we think this pattern uh, that we have seen in the past may be reflective this year as well. All right, so that's the show for today. Let me know what do you think. What do you think about the corporations adopting Bitcoin? What do you think about the Polish Consumer Credit Agency adopting uh, blockchain? Uh, you know, BMW adopt, adopting blockchain technology. Uh, the exchanges and the banks in the world uh, really gearing up, not just for these futures contracts, not just for, not just for this small time, uh, you know, Bitcoin interest and uh, putting their toe in the water, but developing these full blown cryptocurrency exchanges with full third party SEC compliant custodial solutions. Uh, what do you think about the possibility of all of this um, institutional capital coming in, uh, potentially capital from pensions, capital from um, you know, all of these different sources. And uh, do you think that could happen this year? Do you think that that could affect the price of Bitcoin? And is it possible for the price of Bitcoin to 10x um, in, in less than one year? Let me know what you think in the show notes below. Tap that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'm glad that together we are minting coins.